Um, again, I'm Susan Charnello. I'm the membership director with IDA. And this workshop is Letter to Your Neighbor. And I just have a couple of um, things to note for you. Uh, this is being recorded, so it will be available after the meeting. Uh, we will have a Q&A, so as questions come up, please post them in the chat. And um, please keep yourselves muted. Um, so. Our presenter is Adam Cruiser. And Adam has been a delegate for IDA, serving the Chicago area for approximately two years. He has presented to many groups, most recently a live presentation at the Morton Arboretum in Lyon, Illinois, followed by a dark sky hike led by Morton's naturalist. When not advocating for dark skies, Adam is a practicing attorney he has been the chair of the Glen Ellen Environmental Commission and a spokesperson for Sierra Club Cool Cities. And Adam, you're on. Well, thank you, Susan. Um, hello, neighbors. Um, thanks so much for joining. All right, so my name is Adam Cruiser, and I have been a delegate for only about two years. I think actually this, this month is my second full calendar year. Um, and uh, of course, I'm very excited to have been asked to present to you on letters to uh, my neighbor. Um, just just before I get into it, I just want to let you know that there's about 36 houses on my street. So I chose to write letters to everybody on my street. And uh, at the time I wrote these letters, which would have been last year, right? Just after COVID, um, I walk the street and, and early in the morning, so I get a good handle on it. And about 24 of the houses of the 36 on my street, which would include me, would keep their lights on all night. I'm in a kind of a suburban area. Um, so after the first letters that I sent that first year um, and continuing today, there's only five on the entire street that had their lights on all night. And the second year, um, most of the advancements that we've made are people changing from the brighter white LEDs to the more amber LEDs. And next year, I'm gonna try to influence their decisions to change out their fixtures, which is a tough thing because it costs a lot of money. So anyway, um, hopefully I can start this screen share. Uh, so with every presentation that I give, I typically start with this slide. Um, I've given probably 20, 25 presentations, but never on this topic. So this is a new presentation for me. And of course, the title of this topic is Letter to Your Neighbor. For me, it's been Letters to My Neighbors. So what I want to try to do is basically share with you how I prepared, which is so important, prepared, planned, and then ultimately pursued my letters to my neighbor, and then how I was, you know, capable to go ahead and follow up with them, you know, and, and hopefully follow up with them well, because that, of course, is so important too. So this is kind of uh, the dilemma that many of us find ourselves in, and I expect that a lot of us who decided to go into Dark skies did it for maybe this reason. Um, it, it's 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 tough. It's a problem that many of us face. How do we deal with our neighbor's lighting? Um, and hopefully, ultimately, we can have a happy ending. And for the most part, that's what I've had. I haven't been completely successful. There are still some people who, you know, for whatever reason, haven't decided to change. But you know, we, we patience uh, is a virtue. So. Maybe ultimately everybody will. So the first thing we wanna do is prepare. 
And as part of that, of course, we wanna be well-educated about our issues that we're trying to confront so that when we do talk to our neighbors, we're capable of discussing it you know, with them um, as productively as possible. Uh, when I first started with the IDA, and I still am amazed about how many um, tremendous uh, materials there are on the IDA website, uh, one of the things I did was uh, take a trip on the take action section, which is uh, just incredible um, with all the educational opportunities in that section. So uh, in that section, there is a talk to your friends and neighbors section. And that'll take you to public outreach materials, which I have at my house. So um, IDA was willing to send me some and I have them available so that if I need to share them with some of my neighbors, I can. Um, so some of those materials uh, include uh, a, a pamphlet on energy and money, um, a pamphlet on crime and safety, which you know, it's so very important. We wanna be able to talk to our neighbors well about crime and try to address whatever concerns they might have with that, you know, so that hopefully uh, um, that won't become such a tremendous hurdle. Um, other pamphlets are uh, how light pollution can bring harm to wildlife. And with a lot of my neighbors, I found that's what they were most interested in, wildlife, pollinators, things of that nature. And another wonderful pamphlet on how light pollution can put your health at risk, especially with your circadian rhythm and our ability to sleep well. And with the take action um, section, there's also a section on uh, my neighbor's lighting, which has 10 wonderful, helpful hit, uh, hit tips. Um, the first of which is make friends, not enemies. And the second of which is stay positive. So make friends, not enemies, and stay positive. I think you wanna keep that theme through the process of your letters. Ultimately, what we wanna be able to do uh, with our neighbors is to try to walk them through the five principles for responsible outdoor lighting, which, you know, for us, practically speaking on the street, starts with turn the lights off. And for the most part, that's what my neighbors chose to do. So instead of having their lights on um, all night at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning or whatever, um, most everybody has turned them off when they go to bed and most certainly not later than 10 o'clock. It's the most easy thing for them. And of course it's uh, energy efficient too. And then the second um, most easy step uh, for the neighbors has, has basically, for me, proven to be changing out those brighter white LEDs, you know, when they do go to LEDs, um, using that amber color. So with my neighbors, I've always tried to influence them to think about the soft white bulbs, the 2700 Kelvin and less. You know, more difficult proposition with respect to our five guidelines, for me at least with our neighbors, uh, has been to try to influence them to change out their fixtures. It does cost a little bit more money. So um, it's certainly been a more difficult challenge for me. Ultimately, we want to be able to put ourselves in a good position to address with them what we see, um, you know, with the green check, the good, the good home. Um, less light, yellow light, and directed down. So that's how I kind of prepared. I want to be educated so that I can address all those issues well with my neighbors. And then, of course, you want to plan. Um, so as part of that, uh, I try to decide, well, who are my neighbors? Um, who do I want to talk to? Well, Instead of talking to just the, the one or two neighbors who were most obnoxious, and I'm sure we've all got that. Um, you know, we have neighbors that have the bright white LEDs and they're just shining out um, directly at our homes and of course affecting us um, with our houses and our, our ability to sleep well and things of that nature. 
instead of just challenging, you know, one or two people, I thought, well, you know, why don't I talk to the entire neighborhood? And that way I'm not, you know, a, a attacking just one person or trying to change just one person. It's not me and him or me and her. I'm, I'm trying to talk to the entire neighborhood. So nobody feels like they're necessarily being, you know, picked on individually. So for me, I decided that I would go ahead and um, just address my street. Now, I live in a suburb of Chicago called Glen Ellen. And um, I think there's about 27,000 people in our town. Uh, we're relatively affluent. So because of that, you know, we have a lot of um, park district and village sponsored and other um, 501c3 sponsored uh, environmental initiatives. So there's already a lot of themes out there. Um, and, and of course, what we deal with here in Glen Ellen, uh, like a lot of uh, you know, significantly urban areas, we, we can't see much of the night sky. So um, you know, a big challenge for, for me was to uh, you know, try to influence people to just even look up at the sky and to remind them ultimately uh, what a dark sky can be and uh, how important that can be to our, our environment generally. So um, after I decided that I was gonna go ahead and just focus on our street, I, I counted houses. I went outside and I walked in both directions, of course, and I counted houses. And I wrote down addresses. So for me, I'm 351, and of course my neighbor's 353. So I wrote down all the addresses with the idea that, okay, I know who's out there. And now, now I've been living on my street for a while, but I don't know all my neighbors. So I also walked up and down the neighborhood to try to you know, get an idea of what people were doing and what people weren't doing. Um, you know, what, what, what are some of my neighbor's interests? Um, are some of them gardeners? Um, I tried to look to see uh, what maybe they might be doing, um, you know, with, uh, with birds and things of that nature. So I tried to walk the street, kind of canvas the area to try to figure out what their interests might be. You know, ultimately, who will I be talking to? And of course, one of the things that many people are interested in is just saving money. Um, so when you talk to them about, uh, you know, turning off their lights at night, when they may not have otherwise been doing that, because maybe they don't even know they're on a timer or the importance of turning them off, you know, an easy way to converse with them was, you know, you save money by not having those lights on after eight o'clock or after 10 o'clock. And another easy topic that I think that most people in my neighborhood are interested in is climate change. And how fossil fuels, you know, might be affecting our climate. So, um, you know, that was a thing that, you know, I felt, well, I'm comfortable talking to just about everybody about that with the idea that that's a common issue for us. And, you know, most people, I think for the most part, they wanna see a star when they go outside. You know, one of the great things about um, my having done this is I've got a couple neighbors who maybe never paid attention at all about the night sky. And, and now they come down to my house because it's relatively dark compared to the other homes. And we might have a fire outside from time to time. And they come out and they actually look at the night sky from my yard. Um, and, and they're noticing things that they've never noticed before. And sometimes they even bring the kids over, which is, which is really cool. Um, many people are concerned about wildlife. So one of the things that you can address with them in your letters is how, of course, um, artificial light at night affects wildlife, our little nighttime friends. And of course, um, our little nighttime friends include our pollinators. In Glen Ellen, um, we've had over the years a couple themes that um, the Park District and the Environmental Commission has tried to champion. And, and one of those things has been monarch butterflies. And so we had a big monarch, save the monarch campaign, um, which kind of brought attention to 
pollinators and insects and things of that nature. And we've also had a big native gardens campaign. There are a lot of people in our neighborhoods that like gardens. Well, of course, they're concerned about their pollinators. And part of that is nocturnal pollinators and the effect that um, uh, artificial light at night has on our nocturnal pollinators, which are so very important that many people don't even know that moths are, in so, are so important to pollination. And of course, moving from the moths, you know, we go right to the birds. And I think if anybody, if there's any issue on my street that I, I think most people have been interested in, other than lightning bugs, is birds. You know, people are feeding their birds. Um, uh, they got bird feeders. So they're always concerned about their birds. Sometimes they're concerned about the birds hitting their own windows. So, so um, one, of, one of the things that I've been able to discuss with them uh, where we've always got common ground for the most part is birds. And that takes us right to migrating birds and the effect of artificial light at night on our migrating birds. You know, a lot of people don't even know that birds migrate at night. Uh, they might have heard some things about birds striking light at buildings, but they don't appreciate how many millions of birds fly through the area and that Chicago is the number one most hazardous location in the country for migrating birds. And the one thing that I have found that uh, has really influenced a lot of people is the lightning bugs and the effect of artificial light at night on lightning bugs and their ability to find their mates, you know, with their bioluminescence. And the kids just love the lightning bugs. So I've had kids come out, you know, from the houses, they're turning off the lights and they're enjoying seeing fireflies, whereas maybe they wouldn't even gone outside. So you kind of get to that vintage feel about, remember the lightning bugs we could see when we were kids when it was dark? And, you know, certainly that's influenced a lot of people, I think. And then of course, you know, people are starting to learn about the effects of blue white light from our handheld devices and the importance of turning those off. So when you talk to them about um, blue white light and effect on their personal health, you know, try to discuss with them what they may know, which of course is, you know, how their handheld devices may be causing them to be uh, affected by the blue white light. And that's what those bright white LEDs are. And that's why we wanna to go to those ambers. So after you've kind of prepared, you've educated yourself and you kind of know uh, who you're writing to um, and what themes you might want to take, um, you know, it's time to write. Now, I am not a tremendous writer and uh, I have not read, I have not uh, written any books. Um, I've not written any, you know, tremendous articles. I, I'm really just an average Joe when it comes to writing. Um, but what I have found, especially from being a lawyer, um, and, and I hope you're not all turning me off now that you know that, um, but uh, you gotta be positive, okay? If, if you wanna keep relationships and you wanna be able to weather storms with people, you gotta stay positive and, and you gotta stay friendly. Um, and, and I think it's important not to focus on one person. Uh, and, and you don't wanna always just say, hey, it's all about me, okay? And, and, and certainly you wanna be patient. This has gotta be a long-term adventure. You're not gonna change everybody's mind immediately. So when I, when I started to write my letters, I tried to keep those things in mind. And again, there's there was, there was, there was 10 helpful tips at the IDA website that are, you know, something, certainly something that guided me. So on the IDA website, um, there is a sample letter to your neighbor already there. And this letter is more focused to just the one person. Um, you know, I find it's a little bit um, aggressive at times, uh, uh, addressing just that one person and how that one person's affecting just me. But for many people, I'm sure it works well. Um, I kind of chose to take the different route that I've already mentioned, which is, you know, let's talk to a whole group of people so that 
you know, somebody doesn't think I'm just talking to them personally. So with my first letter, um, my introduction, uh, basically I didn't really know what to say. So I just went out and said it. And I don't know, hopefully, hopefully everybody can see this. And if you can't, I think they're on chat, but um, I started with kind of an introduction, a hello. And because it was COVID, um, you know, what I, what I saw were so many people were outside as compared to before COVID when I didn't see so many people outside. So it was just a natural opportunity to start to talk to people about the great outdoors. And, and I shared with them that I recently volunteered for with the International Dark Sky Association and, and talked to them about the Milky Way. Many, many of whom have, you know, they've never seen the Milky Way where I live, um, unless they go to Michigan on vacation or go up to Wisconsin on vacation or wherever the case may be. And I shared with them about how, you know, we can only see 31 stars with our naked eyes when we should be able to see thousands of stars and, and so on. And, you know, before they know it, before you know it, they're looking up at the sky and say, wow, um, I can't see many stars. I want to see more. And, and then I went into the fireflies. And, uh, and I did that because I love fireflies. And I went into the moths and the nighttime pollinators and, you know, how important it is to uh, be aware of them and, and the birds that migrate at night and things of that nature. So that was my, that was more or less my third paragraph. Um, and you'll see, I'm not, I'm not addressing anybody's lighting at all. Um, I'm not addressing my concern about their lighting. I'm talking about us and our environment and what we can all do together. So I kind of finished uh, the first letter with a little bit of a challenge, but in a, way, in a nice way. Um, so I said, basically, I'd like to challenge our short street um, uh, to manage the intensity and duration of our outdoor lights, lighting, and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, talked about the LED bulbs uh, with the Kelvin score and the fixtures. And, you know, hopefully they can turn off their lights at 10 p.m. or whatever time makes them comfortable. You know, no, nothing black and white. And, uh, and of course, using the motion sensors and things like that. And I kind of finished with, uh, you know, hopefully COVID at the end of COVID, we can all get together and maybe sometimes we have block parties, you know, we can all have a dark sky block party or something like that. And I got a lot of great responses with the first letter. I, you know, people actually coming out and talking to me about the issue. And I sent that basically in the spring, you know, May. And then when June, July rolled around, I sent a second letter. I shouldn't say sent, I delivered a second letter. And the first thing I wanted to do with my second letter is I wanted to congratulate everybody for doing what they had done. And a lot of people were turning off their lights at night including my neighbor, Andrew, um, who had his light on all night, you know, unshielded, a bright white light all night. And he came over and he said, Adam, I really enjoyed your letter. And uh, we were talking about stuff and we were sharing a beer. Um, um, and uh, he said, uh, you know, my light's always been on a timer and I've never even thought about it. And he took, off, he took, he took it off the timer. And, you know, the lights off, it's been off for two years now um, at night. So, you know, then I started talking about the fireflies a little bit more. And of course the fireflies were out in the yard already. So people could see the fireflies and enjoy it, you know, with the idea that they were getting that letter at that point in time of the year. And I talked about the pollinators again. Many of us in Glen Ellen have we support pollinator science. It's part of a, a project that Glenn Ellen had. And I wanted to influence them once again with the idea that we have nocturnal pollinators. So I introduced them to a wonderful article. Xerxes Society published an article titled The Night Shift, uh, Moths as Nocturnal Pollinators. And I hope that many of them went and looked at that. 
And, and, I, and I explained to them um, the effect that artificial light has on, on our, our, our moths. You know, and if we don't address the bright white lights, those moths are circling around those bright white lights. They're tiring, they're, they're being attacked by, by predators and things of that nature. And they're not otherwise pollinating you know, the flowers, the plants, some of which depend exclusively on nocturnal pollinators. And I gave them that statistic that the recent study found that nocturnal visits to plants was reduced by 63% in areas with significant artificial illumination as compared to the darker areas. Why? Because the moths are flying around the lights and, and not, not pollinating. And then I went back to the consistent theme about, you know, more or less where we want our neighbors to um, go and end up at, which again is the soft light bulbs, 2700 Kelvin. I tried to influence them to, to maybe bring their lights down a little bit less bright, you know, going to the less lumens, the 40 watts. Remember, most people, they don't know about lumens. They only know about watts, 40, 60, 75 you know, 100, that's what they think about. And if you discuss with them brightness and the concept of watts, um, I think they get a little bit more. So then a year passed. And uh, as I said, uh, the great majority of people who had their lights on all night uh, decided to no longer keep their lights on all night. And I'll tell you what, we are now one of the darkest streets in town. And what's funny is I had somebody come up to me just this summer and they said, you know, Adam, I think we've got more lightning bugs on our street than any other street in town. So when they're walking on another street, you know, which is so bright, they're not seeing as many lightning bugs. So with my second year, I decided I'd only send one letter, just a little reminder, even though we've got some new neighbors. Um, and almost like within days before I sent that second letter, there was a a very important article that came out with respect to turning off lights at a Chicago Lakeshore built, the McCormick Place, where we have our boat uh, events and our auto events and things of that nature. And what that study, and it was a 20 year study conducted by the Field Museum. And what that study uh, showed was that uh, when, when that building, McCormick Place, is lighted at night, uh, bird fatalities are through the roof. But when they're not, when, the, when that building's not lighted at night, there's 80% less fatalities with birds. Okay, and that doesn't even include the birds that are injured and ultimately fly off. So I decided, okay, I'm going to hit that in my letter. So with this letter this year, lights out for lightning bugs. Everybody loves lightning bugs. I, I, you know, again, said hello and thank you. And, and I noted to everybody how they were changing from white to yellow. I wanted to let them know that I had observed that and that I, I appreciated that. And, and then I wanted to let them know a little bit more about me and, and that I'm, I'm working hard to try to address this with, with a lot of people, not just my street. Um, so uh, we had a symposium in Glen Ellen and I spoke at the symposium. I approached the County of DuPage and influenced them to uh, uh, pass unanimously um, a resolution uh, where they now resolve to adhere to international dark sky recommendations. And I told them I was gonna be, be approaching the County of DuPage uh, Forest Preserve District. And just this past week, they changed, that they, they passed a similar resolution. So yeah, I want them to know that it's not just about them, it's about us, all of us, as we approach this dark sky issue. And then I got into um, uh, the lightning bug week and that stuff. And, and then I hit that letter because I knew everybody, anybody who follows the Chicago Tribune or the Chicago Sun-Times, they'd seen that article. So, um, you know, it, it was something that I felt confident that people were aware of. And then again, um, you know, I went down to uh, the reminder about the lights and, and, and what we can do at home. So those are my three letters that I've sent. 
and I'm going to send a letter this next year that's going to focus more on fixtures. Hopefully, I'm going to come up with another theme that's timely. Now, how do you deliver your letters? That's important, too. Your, your method of delivery should be as personal as your letters. So for me, it was a hello neighbor envelope. I wanted all my envelopes to be handwritten. I, I have not yet put anything in the mail. Um, I go on a Saturday or a Sunday. And if people are out, I'm handing them, you know, my, my letter to the neighbor. And, and I'm saying hello. So I'm interacting. And if they're not available, and some people, of course, will not be, um, I, I, I'm not going to put it in their mailbox. I'm just not. I, I think that I don't think that's right. Uh, so I'm going to try to slide it under the mat, or you know maybe put it on the top of, you know, the milk container or whatever the case may be, or maybe just kind of put it in the door. So the method of delivery can't be. Uh, it has to be a polite method of delivery. If you can do it, do it in person. And then just to wrap up here quickly, because I'm sure we're going to have some questions. We don't have much more time. You got to be, you know, available to be a mentor. So after they get the letters, they're going to have questions. And that's why you want to be educated at the front end. So for me, the most important thing to address their questions was to Walk the walk. So if I'm going to talk the talk, I got to walk the walk. So I took a couple pictures. Of course, they're out of focus because I'm a terrible photographer. So this is the front of my little house. And um, I took it because I wanted to let you know that I, you know, I changed out my fixtures. And I went to 2,700 Kelvin bulbs on my front porch and on my side porch. So when my neighbors walk by the house, they see what I'm doing. They see by example, what these fixtures can look like and how attractive they can be. And this is my little garage, okay? So I changed out the fixtures on my garage and changed out the bulbs. And now this was taken very early in the morning, but when I do have the lights on, you know, people again could see, well, Adam's bright. I mean, he's well lit. I, I don't know that I would have any concerns about security in his yard. I'm doing it with the right fixtures and I'm doing it with the right bulbs. So you're setting the example. And then when people come and they want to talk to me, I want to make sure I can give them good answers about the fixtures. So I went to our local Menards, I went to our Home Depot. And what I saw was that the dark sky compliant fixtures are only about $24, $25, you know, maybe $30. So I want to be able to share with my neighbors how much they cost. And I want to be able to share with my neighbors that, you know, sometimes the, the, the non-dark sky compliant fixtures are, are more expensive. So what they choose to buy can be less expensive than a, a non-dark sky compliant fixture. And of course they can see that at my own home. And call me crazy, but I went out and I bought all these boxes of bulbs and I bought all these soft white bulbs. So if my neighbor is ever curious about what the bulb is, I say, hey, Tom, you know, I got a bulb here. If you need a couple bulbs, you know, take the bulbs. It's a $20, $30 investment, but you know, at least people are changing out their bulbs and I'm ultimately the beneficiary of it. So I wanna have those extra bulbs around, um, the soft white bulbs, which are 2,700 Kelvin. And I wanna have those bulbs that have, you know, as few, as few watts as possible with the brightness level being as less as possible too. And then of course, hopefully my neighbor is doing this, whereas maybe he or she uh, wasn't otherwise. And we no longer have the light trespass. We have uh, the light directed down, or at least if it's not directed down, it's that cool amber color as compared to that bright white piercing surgical white light. And hopefully we've got more lightning bugs. Um, which of course everybody loves. So there it is. I had to run through it quickly. I hope you've got a lot of questions. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I, I hope you have an interesting challenge with whatever you choose to do. And I hope that ultimately you have great success and a, a very happy neighborhood. 
So I'm going to stop share and I'll take your questions. Great. Thanks, Adam. Um, first question is from Tammy and Jim. How much money do you think a neighbor might save over a year? Oh, well, that's hard to say. You know, my electric bill uh, certainly is higher at certain points in time during the year, right? So uh, I think I think you can I think you can just tell the neighbor that um, their lights are burning, their outdoor lights are burning uh, five, ten, six, eight hours less every night. Now, whatever whatever that amounts to, I don't know, but I, I would expect that they're probably going to see a difference in their lightning, their 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 energy bill. Um, but I, I don't I don't have the answer about the actual cost savings. Okay, next question. Um, my street is pretty good with dark. It's the business down the street that really bothers me. Has anyone done a similar letter to a business? Or I should say, have you done a letter to a business and had any pos positive results? Uh, I have not, um, but uh, I've been asked that question many times. Uh, especially about specific car dealerships or something to that effect. Um, and I am tempted to send them letters. So maybe that's something I'll do this next year and see what kind of reaction we get. That's a great idea. Okay, this is a, a question with a common theme. Um, how have you responded to the inevitable pushback about crime and safety? Well, uh, the first and most important thing that I've done is, is uh, set an example. So uh, people, I have a pretty nice house on the block. Um, you know, I think people look at my house and they say, that's a nice house. Um, and I've had kids. So uh, I want them to see that I've got beautiful dark sky compliant fixtures. And I've got the 2700 Kelvin bulb that is a more amber color. Um, and and if, if anybody has a question about, well, it's not that bright, I said, well, you, you can get you know, more brightness with your bulb. So I, I try to set the example and, and let them know that um, they can, they can, they can uh, have as much security with well-designed lighting, uh, dark sky compliant lighting, um, than, than, than non-dark sky compliant lighting. And sometimes I'll put up that little example of you, you know, putting your hand up over a bright white light so that you can see all of your environment and you're not blinded. Uh, and I do that especially with my general presentations. So that kind of little example about and how, how their lights start, their eyes start to expand and they can see more, um, that is a great example. People, people really get a good takeaway from doing something like that. Okay, uh, Carol wants to know, how well did you know your neighbors that you delivered letters to? Yeah, some of them I knew very well, um, but some of them who I knew well were the worst offenders. And I was very hesitant to address them directly. Um, uh, and then, of course, others I knew I, I didn't know at all, um, and and maybe they were um, less offensive. So, you know, again, I what I what I hoped was that I could influence four or five or six people really well, where they could then carry the ball to, and they could carry the theme down the street where I wasn't necessarily with them chatting with their immediate neighbors. So some I knew well and some I didn't, but I didn't approach any of them differently. Okay. Um, this is another... Um, and I certainly didn't talk about another neighbor with one neighbor. You know, I didn't want that Hatfield and McCoy thing started. So anyway, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, it's, this is another safety issue 
um, from Janelle. Um, the police department has advised everyone to leave your outdoor lights on all night. And um, unless the police come on board, nothing can happen. Have you ever had an uh, experience with that answer? And what did you, how did you handle that? Um, well, you know, I, I had the, I had the luxury of, uh, living in a neighborhood where at least so far we haven't had the police, um, trying to influence the outcome with respect to lighting on our street. Uh, but I, I'm sure some of you have a much more difficult situation than I do. Um, how do you challenge the police to, um, understand the situation better. I think you have to do that through the municipality. And that's what I'm trying to do kind of globally by, by talking to the county of DuPage, um, by talking to the forest preserve. And I'm gonna be talking to communities more aggressively too. But to answer your question, I, I, think, I think you just gotta do your best to address each neighbor individually and say, you know what, if the police want us to keep our lights on all night, you know, maybe we can do it with dark sky compliant fixtures. Maybe we can do it with less obtrusive white light, uh, uh, less obtrusive amber light as compared to the to the white light. So there are little ways to, you know, maybe confront that situation well. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is a question about holiday lights. Um, my street looks like Grand Central Station during the holidays. Um, does less light make it dangerous to wander out at night? Well, also, that's a, yeah. I yeah, have I can, critters can, running around in my backyard at night. Does less light make it dangerous to wander out at night? Well, I guess that's the old uh, question about you know should we be afraid of the dark. Um, uh, I live in Illinois. The, the only critters that are outside my house are uh, raccoons, um, you know, a skunk once in a while. Uh, we have a fox running through, maybe a coyote down the street, um, maybe a possum once in a while, but none of those critters are going to hurt me. You know, I'm not dealing with a grizzly bear, and I don't think many of us are. Um, you know, or brown bear or something like that. So, you know, for me, the critters don't really concern me. Um, if you watch them, sometimes it's very exciting just to see what they're doing. They don't want to be with you any more than I want to necessarily be with them. So um, critters don't bother me too much. As far as the holiday lights are concerned, uh, boy, we've got, we've got some people in our neighborhood who just light up uh, the entire state with their Christmas lights. But I think the IDA has generally taken a pretty hands-off approach with holiday lighting, so I try to, too. It's so personal for a lot of people. Um, what I might do in the future is, if I get the opportunity, you know, maybe just chat up, uh, maybe not having those really bright white LED uh, Christmas lights. There are choices. So whether I'm talking about um, the lights that people have for their patios outside uh, or whatever else they might have outdoors. I just try to let them know that, you know, you can find 2,700, you can find more amber colors. Um, they typically are available. So that's kind of how I try to address those, those little things like that. Also, I, I just want to say about the, the critters, um, you know, we're not, um, if you have that kind of issue, we're not advocating for, you know, no light on at night. If that's an issue in your neighborhood, we're only asking that you have the appropriate nighttime lighting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I emphasize too, um, you know, in my neighborhood with, this, with the people that are especially concerned about that. You know, we're just, we're trying to, 
we're trying to look for better choices, lighting design. Now, fortunately, a lot of people decide, you know what, I don't need my lights on. I feel safe here in my neighborhood, but I'm sure that's not the case everywhere. Well, I think we're out of questions and we're right on time to end this workshop. So I wanted to say thank you so much to Adam. Great presentation, um, something that's needed. I get questions forever uh, you know, about how do I address my neighbor's lighting? So this is fantastic. And again, it will be, it was recorded, so it'll be available for all of you to use if you need. And I want to thank everyone else that attended the meeting. And um, we hope to see you at the closing. And everyone have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And I did put my email address in the chat. So if anyone wants to send me an email, I can send my letters in word format and uh, try my best to help with any questions that you might have about what I've tried to do in my little neighborhood. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on your success. Wow. Thank you. Wow, wow. Great. Nice job. Well Thanks. done. Good luck, everybody. Be polite. Be friendly. <laughs> <laughs>